how can I filter the true from the false? Yeah. A religion which says God came down as a fish and someone ate it, for example, and that's the end of God, you would say that doesn't make any sense. You see, you have to start ripple effect everywhere in the world. Okay, people are being radicalized um, because of this aggression that's taking place. People are radicalized. What, so either or? No, no, people are being radicalized, clearly. I mean, if you want peace and tolerance and so on, you would expect um, some level of justice. When there's no justice, what do you see? People have this um, grunge or grudge they have because of aggression, and then it radicalizes people, and then they become militant and violent, and then wars happens, and acts of terrorism happen because of that. Because one group is committing terrorism to innocent people, and they feel these are my brothers. So now I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm going to try my best now to go and also harm you because you're harming brothers. That's what's happening. Yeah. There's a few individuals here and there. Yeah. But what we as Muslims, we say, look, you have to go beyond this political things and think about who you are in this reality. You are not a product of chance between a collection of atoms together. You're too, you're too complex. You're too organized. You are too much intricate in your design. You can't account for that as chance and coincidence and mother nature. There is clearly an originator, a creator that fashioned you together and put you together in this form and it will be for a reason. And we say your purpose of your existence is not about knowing who's your best friend and best wife and best food and best clothing and best job and so on. There's more than that. Your whole existence it's not going to be eternal in this life. You're going to die and I'm going to die. How can I, are you going to live more than 130 years, do you think? Most likely not. Most likely not. What we see, people do not live for more, more than 130 years. 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 20. That's as much as we can see people are living. So if we die, why? What happens when we die? What happens to us? Do we end up in our graves and the worm comes and eats us whether we were good and bad and the same result imagine you are such a nice person you are such a nice person very kind compassionate generous very truthful very helpful very caring and guess what you did all of this you sacrifice your wealth you sacrifice your time your money your commitment you did all these good things and you suffered a lot as a consequence of all of this and you died and someone who is so wicked, so bad, a murderer, a rapist, someone cle ethnic, does ethnic cleansing, terrorism, violence, on all of that, they didn't do any good. They had all the power, they had all the money, lived like a king, died like a king, and the worm, same worms and maggots comes and eats both of you. Where's justice? How can your end result be the same when you were not clearly the same kind of people? The good and the bad are not the same. Their consequences shouldn't be the same. So justice demands that there should be a day of accountability. There should be a day of judgment. There should be a day of recompense in which every individual account for their belief and their actions, what they've done. So whether you were generous and kind and so on, you should be rewarded. The Quran says, Hal jaza'ul ihsani illa ihsan what is the reward for good other than good? The reward for good is good. So you, you should be rewarded because that's what's fair and just. But what is the reward for people who are evil and bad, monstrous, rapists and so on and so forth? They should be accountable and they should be punished for what they have done. They should be punished for what they have done because they get away with this punishment in this life but they should not get away from the punishment from the one who is just. That's an awful lot, yeah? There should be a just God who will implement the justice. And that's why you don't need to believe in God through all the scientific miracles and so on. The very idea that you are instilled within your justice, you would know that there is a God who is just. And there will be an accountability in which justice will serve. Okay? You know that because you, you, your heart tells you, you in, in, in instinctively that justice is something that needs to be served because you'll be craving for justice in your graves. Right? What's your name? So, <laughs> oh, my name's Connor.
Connor, I Connor. think you, what, what you hear is if we said, you, obviously today in your tube you saw yeah, yeah, yeah. a contract of the two women, one wearing the hijab and one not. Yeah, yeah. And just maybe asking you questions. ended up in the right, uh, just right place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. I think you have a purpose there. Obviously, you can ask further questions. Yeah. Do you believe in anything in terms of Great. its existence? Yeah, I was, I was speaking to the guys earlier. I was saying that I think if you look at all religions, they have a, a sort of a common thread where you're meant to be a good person. And every night, like in Christianity, some people pray in uh, Islam. Apologies if I get it wrong, but you guys pray as well um, for, for a specific reason. And it's all to do good in your life and to be beneficial to the rest of the world. I think when you use your mind to focus on that reason, there's some sort of energy that emits from you. And I think mm -hmm. as long as you're focusing on being a good person, whatever label you put on it, I think it's the right thing to do. And as you say, um, in afterlife, you're judged. And in your heart, if you know you've been doing the right things, you end up in the right place. And as you say, in your heart, if you know you've been doing the wrong things, you're going to be judged after that. Yeah. So I believe as long as you're following and trying to be as good as you can for the rest yeah. of the... There's one thing society. associated with this is not only good actions and bad actions, your actions themselves that will be taken into account, but your belief as well. Yeah. What did you believe about you and your God and all these things? Because you can just imagine you go and you do all the good things in a particular company, you're not employed in that company. You do the desk work and the field work and so on and so forth. There's no contract between you and them, this company. Do you expect them to give you wages at the end of the day and at the end of the month and so on? I think it's There's your no intent. It's got to be your no, intent. No, no. But, 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 but you, you, you are not going to expect a salary from them because they don't employ you, even though you just did the works. What I'm saying is God created you. And he expects from you to worship him alone without associating a partner with him. Like saying God has a son or saying God has a family or God is this monkey, banana, you know, a rat or tree, whatever. Or worshiping part of the creation and saying, or saying God is not worshiping uh, worthy, for example. You can be, have many concepts about God. Yeah. If God created you for a purpose, you have to fulfill that purpose to have the right consequences in the hereafter. Because your judgment or your assessment of your life is going to be based on what did you believe about God? When God says, look, I created you to worship me and in instead you worshipped a tree, for example, mm. then God is not going to be happy with you because you went against God's wishes and directions and directives and so on, right? So when God asks us that this is what is required of us, we have to fulfill this purpose. Of course, first knowing that this is indeed the correct concept of God and correct message from God and this is the correct messenger and so on. And then you submit yourself and you live a life accordingly. Yeah. If we did not have the right belief, then we will be in a bigger trouble because God doesn't want simply your actions. He wants the correct belief. Satan, in all of the religious belief system, knows God. But Satan is not going to go to heaven because he disbelieved God. He didn't submit to God's will, even though Satan is aware of God. So Satan didn't have not only the correct concept of submission, but he didn't fulfill his purpose. Purpose is to worship God and he became a rebel and he disobeyed God and he is sort of going in his own ways and so on. So it is not like um, some people say, you know what, I can see the goodness in all religion. I appreciate that and if people want to follow their religion it's okay religious pluralism or this pluralistic understanding of things is not what God has already mandated God says look I am like this and I am not like this and I expect you to believe me like that so if somebody says you know what I will worship you and I will also associate a son with you and worship him as well and God says no I don't have a son and it's an insult to me when you say I have a son. The heavens and the earth was like what? You know, shatter and, and, and crumble. Mountains to crumble, the earth to shatter when behind you. Yeah, yeah. When 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 someone says God has a son. Imagine someone says, you know what? I have a partner. And someone says, Well, your partner is ugly and you're not gonna like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Even you. So you have to have the right concept. 
So if you want, Wallahi al Masal Allah, it's not no comparison likewise. But I'm saying, when God says, "Look, I am one and self-sufficient," and then people say, "But you have a son as well, and only through your son that we can reach you," God is not going to be happy. So this is why religious pluralistic belief system is not acceptable. Only one is acceptable. What God, what God says, this is the way that I accept, and that's why the Quran tells you that He says, "In Nadina in the Allah Islam." Surely the religion in the sight of God is Islam. And whoever chooses any other religion, it will never be acceptable of them. So it's very important to recognize that fact that in the reality of multiple religious belief systems and ideologies, we need to know which one's the correct one. Yeah. Because not every one of those are equally valid in the sight of God. In fact, God tells us in his final revelation, the Quran, this is for you, by the way, oh, thank you. Um, and this is just the Appreciate leaflet, it, yeah. the, this is the Quran, tells us only Islam is the valid religion, valid way of life, valid ideology, valid, you know, in a way that you conduct your life. Yeah. So you need to ask yourself, I know God exists. I know God has to be independent, self-sufficient, absolute, almighty, sovereign. So I have to now assess other religious systems and ideologies and say, how can I filter the true from the false? Yeah. A religion which says God came down as a fish and someone ate it, for example, and that's the end of God. You would say that doesn't make any sense. Mm. You see, you have to start some criteria to assess. Yeah. If I told you a religion which says the reason why there's a rainbow in the sky is because God put it there to remind him not to destroy mankind again. Does God need reminding by a rainbow? Of course not. But that's in the Judeo-Christian books and the scripture. So when you assess anything to say whether it's from God or not, you have to set up certain criteria. Does it give you the correct description concept of God, the correct attribute of God? Or does it give you the, the, the attributes of God which are deficient and faulty and weak and so on? Because you know God would be perfect in his attributes. A religion which says God came down. No, not came down. God. He went up on the tree and sat on the branch after taking the clothes of the woman who went naked swimming because they were only women, right? And they were swimming in the pond. He took their clothes and he sat on the branch of a tree and he's witnessing, observing and being amused. When the pure, poor girls eventually realized, they said, give our clothes back. He says, come out of the water, like hands down. What would you say about that concept of God? A pervert, would you? You would say that's a pervert. You would say that's a pervert. That is a belief system of billions, if, if billions of people on earth today. You want to guess what yeah. religion yeah? Oh, I can only assume it's Christianity. No, not Christianity. <laughs> Christianity doesn't believe in this pervertness. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What is it? There are Hindus okay. who believe in that. Krishna? It's like this with this gopis and so on and so forth. They will say, oh, this is a celestial love yeah. and things. Come on, you can. I mean, you'll be surprised to see in India certain temples with all this sexuality depicted within temples. So to them, Greek mythology, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm saying this is pervertness. This is all perversion and so on and so forth. So whenever we are going to examine a belief system, whether it's from God or not. Mm. You see how the Quran makes a critique of Judeo Christian belief system in one chapter in the Quran. It's a chapter of purity called Surah Al Ikhlas. It says, the Quran says, say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. It doesn't say, say, God of Arab is one, God of Israel is one, God of the European is one. It says, say, God of everyone, one. Because the Jewish people believe God is the God of the Jewish people, God of Israel. They are the chosen people, and everyone else is irrelevant. You can give as much interest as possible to those non-Jews, but don't 
deal with interest between yourself. They are like nothing. That is racism. That's what he's alluding to. A god is god of every human being. Not only god of the Arabs and god of the English and god of the Germans and god of the Israelite, Israel people. So that belief system, Quran, you know, refuted that by the criticism that God is not God of Jew Jewish people only. God is God of all. And it's, when it says God, Allahu Samad, God is self-sufficient, eternal and absolute, independent. It refuted the Christian position in which they believe God begotten a son, and that's also God. But this begotten son is not self-sufficient. Christ, the second member of the Trinity, is dependent on the Father to beget dependent on the father for his own existence so there is no self-sufficiency here so quran says no you know you believe that you have about this you know this is not a correct concept of belief lam yalid wa lam a even more clarity that god is not born or begotten and god doesn't give birth or produce children and so on he has no lineage or he doesn't produce any lineage because he's one and self-sufficient so the idea that people say you know what god has a son because god somehow Part of him became a son and so on and so forth. This is an erroneous concept because God doesn't need a son or a daughter. God doesn't divide himself. The whole idea of division of God and then a part of, imagine the knowledge of God became a daughter called Isis or Venus. And the mercy of God became a grandma. Does it make any sense? You're personalizing God's attribute and then saying this is another God. Jesus was created by God's word, Kun, and he is, B. They misunderstood the Logos of God's command of God that created Jesus, and somehow then started saying, no, that word is actually God himself. So they personified an attribute of God and made it into God. So you have Jesus who is God, the Father who is God, and they also say Holy Spirit is God. But if you ask them, but that's one, two, three gods, why do you say one God? you'd have no response. They will say it's a mystery. Yeah? Mystery. Mystery. It's a mystery card only played when you know it's incoherent, illogical, irrational. That's when you say it's a mystery because you know it doesn't logically cohere. And your way out is by saying, you don't understand it, it's mystery, it's beyond reason. Yeah? Imagine I said, these tripods, that's God. It's a mystery. Do you have anything to reason with me when I say it's a mystery? You can't reason with me. It's a mystery. You can't fathom and understand and reason and use your logic and intellect in there. It's a mystery. That's what they're doing. So any religion which says about God, God is a mystery, you should ask yourself, why are they saying that? Is there something within the religious belief concept that there is something that is incoherent? Okay? So we are saying in Islam, you will find the most coherent concept of God that your heart and your mind will accept and will have no doubt accepting it. This chapter that I was referring to, that I, I, and then the last verse is, and there's nothing like unto God, right? This is that I was reading about here. Say he is Allah, the one, the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, and there's none like unto him. Eternal refuge, look, that means he is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient, sufficient to meet the needs of all this and, and so on and so forth. He's totally independent. That's one word that exemplifies all of this, all of this meaning. That concept of God, if you reflect on it, it's logically, rationally, all coherent. It will make sense to your heart and your mind. You will say, yeah, God has to be one. There cannot be more than one God. Do you know what, what will happen if there's more than one God? Conflict of will. One God says, what's your name again? Connor. Connor. One God says, I don't like Connor. Disappears from existence. Another God says, I like Connor. I want him to live for another 150 years. What's going to happen to you? You can't be both here and not here. If you have absolute gods with absolute power and absolute will, they can't apply their will with power both at the same time equally. You cannot be disappeared from existence and you can be also in existence yeah, for 150 yeah. years. It's not going to work. Imagine both of you are in a car with independent steering wheels and you want to take the car to the south and you want to take the car to the north and you're not talking to each other and you are independent of each other. I just say, I'm not going to listen to you. I am me and you are you. Where's the car going to go? Nowhere. That's the conflict of will, the problem. The world 
does it demonstrate to you? Is, is the Earth still rotating? Yeah. What does it tell you? There's one organizer, one controller within this universe who's controlling and looking after all this world. Had there been more than one God in our universe, the universe would have been destroyed long time ago. Yeah. So the Quran tells us this. You know, let people think, had there been, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَا Had there been more than one God, there would be corruption, chaos and ruin. So God is even giving us intellectual, rational argumentation to reject polytheistic concept of God. So the only concept of God that will make sense, your heart and mind will accept, is about monotheistic concepts. So all these beliefs about multiple deities in Greek pantheon and Roman pantheon and Hindu pantheons and so on and so forth, you will say that cannot be depiction and realization of the truth. They will be, these are all falsities introduced in the name of religion, in the name of God, in the name of truth. So all you're left with monotheistic religions, and there are only a few. And if you want to study them, you can ask about them, what is their belief concept? I gave you one example only about God putting a rainbow because he needs reminding. And you will say God is all knowledgeable because God has to be necessarily perfect and self-sufficient in his knowledge. He doesn't have limited knowledge. He doesn't know what your name is, what's going to happen tomorrow, or have I forgotten? And, and he needs reminding by something else. So these belief concepts will, depicted in certain books will tell you these books are corrupted if they were from God in the first place. That's what we, our positions are. The revelation that came to Moses and, and Jesus Christ, as they were preached and taught, people who believed they were successful. But as time went by, they started changing and twisting the message and fabricating uh, all these erroneous ideas within them. And that's why you see difference in the belief concept of God and salvation and, 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 and what should behave and so on and so forth. That's corruption that's happening. If I were to tell you like, if you ask a Christian, where do you get this belief that God is three in one? They would not find a single verse in the Bible, in the New Testament, where God says I'm three in one. But there is a verse in the Bible. That's a fake, forged verse in the Middle Ages, 1 John 5, 7. In the Middle Ages, some jealous, um, overpassionate Christian, not able to find a Trinitarian proof verse, they wrote one themselves. They forged one themselves in a manuscript in the 15th century. That's how corruption happens because of people's theological motives. People, theologically, they realized they do not have anything to support Trinity. Just make one verse, let, 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 let forge one. That's what they did. Christians now quite um, honestly agree in their translation of the Bible. This verse does not occur in ancient manuscripts. It only occurs in X, Y, and Z in the 15th century and so on. They're telling you openly that all the other Bibles which still have that is a forgery, not the words of God. Okay. So this is what's happening in, in certain books. But the Quran is unlike any other books you can imagine in, 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 in this planet. The Quran is considered to be verbatim word of God. Speech of God verbatim. Not the speech of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, but God's words that God gave to the Prophet through the angel Gabriel verbatim. So when the Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, even the word Qul huwa Allahu ahad, all of those words are from God himself and this has been transmitted to us in the way that we are certain that this is how the Prophet left behind the Quran it's been transmitted through preserved way of transmission so the Quran was not only written down by people who can write by the the authorities who are in the states it was accessible to everyone, unlike the Bible, which was only in the hands of the allies. The common people didn't have access to the Bible. Yeah, that's why when William Tyndale and others, when they started translating it, you know, they were in big problem. So the Quran was accessible. It was written down, but more importantly, it was memorized word for word, sentence for sentence, letter for letter, sound for sound. So when we said the Quran is preserved, it has been preserved in the 
multiple modality of the Quranic recitation, exactly even to the very sound itself. If I said like this, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. The word Maliki, I said Maliki Yawmiddin. The Prophet recited in this way. The Prophet also recited in Maliki Yawmiddin, in a little bit elongated form, right? Two words with a different meaning, but they're complementary. Both of these words, with their particular sounds and their elongation, have been preserved. All the way back to the Prophet How do we learn the Quran? We learn from a memorizer of the Quran who is a certified memorizer. Because how, what happened is this. So I have my, my family. There's someone who's a memorizer. Where's the brother gone? Almost uh, most families. The brother, come here. Assalamu alaikum. This brother memorized the whole of the Quran. Many people in most families memorize all of the Quran. But just to show you how the memorization of the Quran is in terms of you understanding how not a single letter can be misplaced and yeah. so on. Do you have anyone Arabic Mus'haf? Yes. No, 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 actual Mus'haf. Oh, no. Page. <laughs> this brother, we demonstrated some time ago. If I say something, I memorize, right. A word here, he will tell you which is the word here, for example, which page, or is it this page, or that page, yeah, and so on yeah. and so forth. Amazing. Photographic memory. And the brother, mashallah, is just one of hundreds and thousands, if not millions, of people who have this ability to memorize the Quran. I, I could have demonstrated, I don't have a mushaf. Do you have one? You can phone some. Okay, let's do that. Hold on to this. So that people appreciate the level of transmission. Get the Quran? Yeah. Okay. Now. Now, let me. Okay. Let me go anywhere. Yeah. So Is I'm. English version for this. No, I, I will. I will. You know Arabic? No, no. No, no. Can you read? Who, 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 who can read? Arabic. You can read Arabic? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay. Now. Just whisper. Okay. Test number one. The beginning of the chapter on the page, it says, وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ oh, That's it, right? That's it. Now, where does it occur in the page? Uh, the first uh, ayah of the page. First ayah on the page. And what is the last word of that page? The ayah, last word of that page? Last uh, ayah of the page. Um, Surah al-Jinn. No, no, same Surah al-Jinn. Yeah. The, the, the last ayah of that page. Yeah. Uh, sorry, last word of that page. Yeah, the last, very last word. The last word, okay. Uh, let me get the ayah first. Yeah, yeah. So, li'a'lama. No, no, he said, Risalat Rabbihim, the same ayah. Uh, uh, Where's the ayah? Uh, the ayah is, li'a'lama an qad ablaghu. Which word? Last word? Adada. Adada. Okay. This last word. Let me go random somewhere else. Right. Okay. Now, let me go the other way. Right. Difficult. Make it difficult. Okay. This is Surat Al Mulk. It starts with Tabarakal Ladi. Last word. Last word. Last word is Kabir. Yeah. yeah. So if I had, yeah, he read the whole thing. So I wanted. To, can you do two pages at once? Because I want to test you a different way. Like, is it the, the left-hand page or the right-hand page? Can you do two pages in Hindi? Side by side. Okay. Oh, you want to go that way? Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can get it. The way the Quran is. Oh, you got a Mus'haf? Yes. Let me see. Let me see. I have, no, I have a Mus'haf too. You no, no, two pages, side by side facing. I'll try now. Okay. So if I give but this, I have, I have it, I have it, don't worry. Surah? Okay. Can you do this? Can you do this? Yeah, he can. Doesn't it occur? So you need um, certain Mus'haf, yeah. like. 
Okay. How long does it take? So, no, 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 okay, okay. I printed, I, I would have shown you, like, for example, if I asked him, like, okay, this is the beginning, this is, okay, in, um, one more time I will finish. I, I do uh, apologize for bringing you into this test, but so far you've been, you've been amazing. Okay, this is, it's so working here. Oh, there you go, mashallah. Okay, now, the words I'm going to, read wa maryam ibnata imran allati ahsanat farjaha now where does this words okay uh, the last uh, 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 in the just give me the location these words do they occur on the page which is this side or on the right hand side the right hand side uh, on the right hand side uh, correct this side yeah. yes and where does it occur at the top middle at the left at the bottom exactly where it is amazing and on that page, the last word, um, can you close your ears and go over there, go over there. <laughs> Do you mind? Let's go, go, go far. No, no, go, go too far. Is... Okay, come closer. What's the last word of this page? Uh, the same surah you said. The same surah, the same, yeah. I don't need to show any more. How many pages are Six, over, over 600 pages of the Quran. This is the whole of Quran. Translation, right? This is the Quran in English and Arabic. So he memorized. MashaAllah, may Allah preserve him and may Allah bless him and his family for all of you know preserving the Quran in the hearts. The Quran has been transmitted to this level of preservation to the, not only the words, but the letters and the sounds, okay? He could have just said, for example, Qanitan, and he would have said, no, it's Qanitin or Qanitun. He would have corrected it. That's the level, that's the level of, you know, the, the meticulous preservation of the Quran yeah. through words, letters, and sounds, okay? So the Quran, we have today, we know this is what the Prophet left behind to us without a shadow of doubt, because that's how it's been transmitted. So when this brother memorized, for example, for if he wants to officially teach, he needs to have what we call ijazah, a certificate of permission from his teacher and say, look, I give you a permission to teach. And this is my ijazah or a certificate that I learned from my teacher, say Abdullah. Whose teacher? Who is Abdurrahman? Whose teacher? is say Omar and so on all the way they will say eventually back to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he is giving you the whole chain of the Quran and when he passes on and teaches someone else like this brother he will say look I give you because I've tested your memory and of the Quran that I am satisfied now you can teach with no problem with my certificate on you and you can add my name on it and he will say this brother will say I learned the Quran and I have permission to teach from brother Abdul, my teacher Abdullahi, who has his teacher and so on and so all the way back to the Prophet. That is a living chain of certificates of the Quran in which guarantees preservation of the Quran. Okay? Because he would not give him the certificate unless this teacher is sure that he has the Quran entirely correct. If he's making a mistake, he will give him a chance again to correct it. Eventually, the certificate will be provided after all this test and assessment that he's sure that he has the Quran in his heart and then he will give the certificate. And do you know how many people we have memorized the Quran today? Hundreds and thousands. More than even that. Yeah? More than that. How many? Roughly about millions. Millions and so on. Right? And, and guess what? The Quran is memorized by people who don't even speak Arabic. Even a six year old can memorize all of the Quran. Yeah? So this is one of the reasons the Quran tells people to reflect on, you know, you know, that we've made the Quran easy to remember. Would you not take heed then? So God has made the Quran in a certain linguistic genre, in a way it has no patterns of like poetry of the Arabs, but it has rhymes and rhythms. It, it, it you know, internally, makes this rhythm within you when you read and recite the Quran. In fact, I highly recommend 
you listen listen to the Quranic recitation online on YouTube and so on. As you're reading a chapter, listen to it because the Quran is our own recitation. In and as they recite the Quran in Arabic, and then you will see how it transforms your heart. And you don't know if you don't know the Arabic, but you can feel it. That this is not ordinary human speech. It it speaks to your inner self, you know, your disposition. Yes. And then you will see that this is divine speech. Yeah. Okay, it's not like any speech. This is how Quran deals with the humans themselves. When the Arabs heard the Quran being recited, you know what they wanted to do for the for people not to become Muslim? Make noise, make noise around it. Al Ghawfi, make noise because we don't want people to hear the Quran. Because as they hear the Quran, this is it has magical powers to it. Somehow it's transforming people to accept Islam and the message of Islam, message of Quran. So the Quran is a guidance from Allah, we can be sure, because not only is preserved through this transmission of writing and memorization, as we have some demonstration of how this meticulous preservation of the Quran is in our hearts, you can destroy every printed media, every media in CDs, DVDs, audio, whatever in the Quran. And you can bring the whole Quran from this brother alone. Yeah, that's good. And there's hundreds and millions of people yeah. around there who can bring the Quran back. So the Quran is not you can just destroy like that. You know, people burn the Quran. <laughs> what, are you going to just, you know, make the Quran disappear? It's in the heart. You can't, you can't burn what's in our hearts, right? So the Quran not only gives people this confidence of its preserved book, but at the same time, it asks you, why would you not believe? Mm. You know, it simply just says, why don't you believe? It gives you reasons after reason after reason. Why don't you believe? Because what are you waiting for? You believe? I was going to ask yeah. Allah, like, what are you waiting for? He, it's asking you, there is a God who created you and your responsibility is to worship him. And he says, you know, and, and submit to him that there's none worthy of worship except God, except the Prophet Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his messenger. The question is, what are you waiting for? Are you expecting God to come down, come to the heaven, sky over here and says, you know what, um, Connor, here am I. Um, believe in me. We can't have this kind of expectation. God doesn't deal with this kind of ways of people's needs and expectation about to believe in him. Because if God were to come down, as a sake of argument, the matter will be settled. There'll be no tests. No one can say, I, be, I disbelieve now. But we have been created with an intellectual faculty of reason and choice so that we can then believe or not believe based on what we want to do. That's the test. God did not create us as robots. You see, angels have been created who have no choice on the matter. What does the Quran say about? La yahsuna? Ma ma they have nothing against God. What God commands them, they cannot disobey Him hmm. because they are the ones who don't have the capacity to disobey God. So if you think about like robots that you program, they do what you program to do. We were created after the angels with some amount of free choice where we can disobey so god wants us to appreciate who he is with our own self with our own admissions with our own choice and say we surrender to you because you are worthy of worship that's the level of difference between us and the angels and by doing so we become higher than the angels we're saying look even with our ability to disobey god but we accept god we submit and surrender to God. That's what God wants us to do. So Connor, you can't expect God to come down and, and tell you that, okay, I'm God and, and, and believe in me. He's given you enough evidence in the Quran, enough evidence in the signs within your own self, within the horizons, to know that God exists, that God is one, God is absolute, and the God is the God of Islam because that's the most perfect description of God. And the Quran comes with its own proof and evidence that it's from God. It tells you that if book, if that book was not from God, you'll find many contradictions in it, many errors in it, many discrepancies in it. If you can't find it, as you expect it to find. Look, a book that is written more than 1400 years ago, talking about science, you expect it to get it wrong. Because science develops and now we know many things about the world. We know now the earth is not flat. We know the earth revolves and so on and so forth, right? But people in the past, they didn't have all this kind of concept. Did they know the earth? Uh, not the earth. Yeah. Did you know the earth is contracting? Did you know that? The earth is actually contracting on its sides. Did you know the heavens are expanding? That you know. 
the heavens are expanding, right? The the the, the stars are receding, moving away from each other. Yeah. The, the 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 redshift, and you know about the cosmic background radiation. You know about the Hubble telescope. That's why they say the universe is expanding. And at one point it was so small, so tiny, there was a singularity, and then Big Bang. That's what they're saying, right? Scientific model, mm. dominant model. The Quran. If you were to talk about any of these scientific things, with the absence of technological development and knowledge, the Quran would get it wrong, as many books have got it wrong. But when the Quran does describe them, it describes them to this level of precision and accuracy. Why? How is the Quran able to get this right and filter all the erroneous wrong belief system about cosmology, for example? The Quran says like this, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي أفلا يؤمنون. Do you have any people have memorized? So the Quran have the unbelievers known or seen that the heavens and the earth was joined together as one piece and God parted it asunder and He brought every living thing from water. Would you then not believe? Now who is God addressing? Our الذين كفروا do not the unbelievers, the ones who do not believe, see. So God is addressing the unbelievers, the people who don't believe in Islam, in about God and about Quran and Muhammad Wasallam. What does the Quran in this particular ayah say at the end? Afala <laughs> yu'minun. Would they do not believe? Addressing that you don't believe? Have you not seen this? And then says, would you then not believe? What do you expect in the middle? Some kind of evidence. And like exactly, precisely the Quran gives two evidence in one verse. One from astrophysics and one from biology. The common origin of the universe and its separation and every living thing coming from water. Okay. How does anyone know this 1400 years ago? When all these differences in terms of cosmological ideas and belief and about belief about life and its origination, Quran not only gets it right, but is very remarkably amazing. So Quran is simply saying, why would you then not believe? That's the rhetorical question the Quran is asking. Why are you not then a believer? You are someone who didn't believe in God and didn't believe in the Quran, didn't believe in Islam, didn't believe in Allah, didn't believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here you go, evidence. Would you then not believe? Why did Adam come from the earth? Adam was constituted with clay and water. But it's... It didn't say water, it said from clay. No, the Quran tells you firstly everything from water and that clay, that clay is also clay mixed with water to get that form. Salsal and kal no, this is what the Quran is talking about. Salsal and kal It does say there in black and white. That's actually mixed clay with water. Yeah, when the Quran says God clay and the clay became like Salsal and kal like the potters, like, like potter, pot, you know, who does pottery? Like what they have made molding a shape. Can I, what, can I ask what, you a question? Can I one a second, question? you can. What do they do? They use water to shape the mud, the clay, to make into this form. That's what the Quran is describing. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. It's been very okay. yeah. So That's the question remains, good. question remains. Ask yourself, why are you not a Muslim? Yeah. Why are you not a Muslim? Then you then have a, you know, relationship does, with your God does, and saying, does the you know, Quran those am I not ready or am I ready or not? Because this is the submission that you have to take. I cannot, I, I cannot convince you. I cannot force you in any way, shape. You have to accept it yourself. And you make that journey. Because if you didn't accept and you went in your journey of just like fulfilling your, you know, your ego and feeding your ego about what makes you happy, boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, you know, fashion and food and clothing and so on that's not the purpose of your life so when you die you would not be in a position to justify your disbelief in the creator and unsubmission to your creator so before you die you have to make sure that you have taken that journey but the question is when do we die do we know no chance is it possible we can die tomorrow Very exactly so my plea to you humble plea do not delay in investigating and accepting Islam, if you find this is the truth, because we do not have a guarantee when we're going to die. And before we die, we have to make sure we are in that state of submission, because God will only accept that, not just like we are wandering around and I don't have time for that. 
he wants you to actually say yes yes i submit in my heart and i profess with my tongue and i will demonstrate with my limbs that yes you are worthy of worship and i worship take care thank you, care. Take care. Take care. Just one, just one. Yes? Mansour. 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 Thanks, brother. all the best you take care